Hey guys, Dave from Nerdicky, Four Nerds by Nerds, hanging out with Staff Raider Doug. And today we're going to tell you why you need to play every game like it's a one shot. Jump down the description below where you can find Nerdarchy, the newsletter, game weekly tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. So, one shots, con games, there's some pros there, there's some cons there, cons there. <laughs> pun <laughs> intended. So, here's the thing, right? When you're playing in a one shot or a, con a convention style game, one of, the, one of the downsides is definitely the fact that you, you're not going to get, the, like, if you fall in love with the GM or the character of the party, you're probably not going to be able to play the character again. You're probably not going to play with those people again. Oh, and you're probably not going to play with that GM again. Or if you are, it's going to be like a, a you know, like an annual thing. Or you know, ch chances they could be from anywhere. Yeah. You know, so that kind of stinks. But at the same time, there's some definitely cool parts about playing at a con game. And you kind of brought one up earlier. Yeah, for sure. There's the fact that like because you're probably not going to play that character again or see that GM again, you're just more willing to, to be daring. Or, you know, do things like, man, I'm probably going to die. Like, can I admit, you know, like, if you're planning on playing a character for a long time and there's, like, a pit that you need to jump across and it's, like, certain death, you're probably not going to even want to make that roll, even if you're, like, expertise in acrobatics and all that. It's like, yeah, but if I miss this guy, I like lots are gone or so. But at a con, it's like, yeah, sure, I don't care. If he plummets to his doom, oh, well. Yeah. Now, we're gonna see him again. Th that being said, there's definitely instances where we all did that, where we we took we made we pulled off risky maneuvers, knowing that like this could be it. Yeah. This is my character just plummet to their death right now, but we were like, ah, screw it, it'll be cool, right? Mm -hmm. It'll look cool if it, if we pull it off. We had several people die, and they're like, ah, you know, whatever, you die. The, the, the thing happened. We had we had one person that were like they were set up to do the last stand. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it just worked out that they didn't actually make their last stand, but they were prepared to. And it tends to be stuff that, that doesn't happen in your home game nearly as much or a game you're playing on a regular basis. Absolutely not. And a couple of weeks ago, I just ran a one shot because we had some players missing, and they had the same thing where I had a kind of just a random encounter to scare them where they were, uh, you know, they were low-level characters in the jungle because I was inspired by the Tomb of Annihilation. And there was a giant ape and a giant crocodile, and I was like, oh, that'll be scary. They make it squished, so, you know, as these things are battling through, and they're like, let's fight it. And I was like, okay, this is probably going to be a shared adventure, but <laughs> they actually just threw guile and tactics and some of their characters' special abilities because they were playing oddball characters. They beat them both, I, and, and that was like the highlight of the evening. I was like, well, we could just call it right now because that was awesome, way more awesome than whatever I had planned for the rest Let, of it. Let's <laughs> leave on a high end yeah, on a high right, note. Right, yeah, right. So, and that was just meant to be a one shot too. And that was like the first thing they did, so. So, yeah, so like that makes me think of like a couple of things. One like is, one of the things is maybe you should play every game like it's a one shot, you know? And to kind of like circle back around to what we were talking about before we started shooting was like, that was kind of like an old school mentality where like characters just died. Yeah. Like in the old days of D&D, &D, and cause Doug, me and Doug are around the same age. You played D and D like it was a video game, yeah. right? Now that, that's kind of frowned upon nowadays, but you know why? Because when we played D and D like it was a video game, your character effing died and you didn't have an extra life. Yeah. You might get resurrected or uh, raised dead or something at some point, but it was not common. It did not happen often, and you're, you would just make up a new character and start over again. Yeah, and you, we probably were more daring back then, whereas now you're a little more cautious because, like, I don't want to lose this cool character that I just built. And, uh, you know, but the flip side is even people like um, one of the guys on, on Critical Role, Liam O'Brien's mentioned that's what he likes about even the long campaign, because, like, he as a person isn't going, you know, he's not going to do those kind of daring things. But in a game, it's like, well, yeah, of course you're going to do the crazy stuff that's like, could I die? Probably, but it's a character, and I want them to be heroic and action-packed, so you can kind of learn that from those one sh that feeling of one-shots. Like, just start applying that in your long-term game, too. I mean, you probably fail sometimes, but when you succeed, it'll be really cool. Well, or, or that sometimes might be the, like, only, the first and only time yeah. for that character. But that's all right, you get yeah. another one. Like, and I've, I've literally played in games where, like, if you died, the GM was like, all right, make a new character, level, the, level one. Yeah. And that can no be matter cool, what though. level the other characters are. That can be cool, too. I mean, that you, was you not know, cool. <laughs> well, I mean, you're always bummed at first, you know, for 10 or 15 minutes until you think, like, okay, now I'm going to play this kind of character. But that can add a whole other dimension to your, even if you have a long campaign, too. Like, 
you, you have a lower level character with the higher level guys that adds a whole other element to how they're going to approach combats and encounters. You too. become their Nodwick, basically. Yeah, but that can be neat. That can be fun, too. <laughs> Here, son, hold my scabbard. <laughs> yeah. I'll be back. <laughs> and you're just trying to stay at not become a casualty in the battle. Mm-hmm. And maybe someday those higher level guys die, and then your low level guy's the hero to some other characters, so you can just keep it going like that. Yeah, and also then, you know, it's, like, from a mechanical standpoint, you do gain levels much faster yeah. when you're lower level. And you're just piking in video game terms. It's like, yeah, I was there when they beat the, you know, the Copper Dragon or whatever. I was in danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and with because of bounded accuracy, maybe you'll get you know a air shot off with your bow and hit him or something. Yeah, there's so there you is could always contribute. that. <laughs> well, you can always roll twenty anyway. Yeah, that, that so. too. But yeah, you know, am I saying do we need to go? Do I necessarily want to go back to that style? No. But if I'm playing in a game where you know my DM is going to be cool and be like, all right, these guys are six level. You come in in a five or six level, or close. You know, mm-hmm. be, you know, it's not it's not the end of the world to lose a character. It happens. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It can be fun, and you're going to tell better stories and have more exciting things that happen. And like the best part about this hobby is. When, is is the stories that get told later on down the road. Oh, yeah. And if you're always super conservative and scared that your character is going to die, you're just going to get less of those stories. Yeah. Like, I feel like tonight in the game we played tonight, we have some stories we can sure. we can bring forward with us. Uh, even in the game we played the other night, like, you know, because we did unexpected things mm-hmm. and and because in some ways we didn't care about the campaign world and it was a living game, a living world and we didn't know about it, and we're like, well, we're never going to play in this world again. We're just doing what we do. And now now we actually created a story that changed the world, and those other players are like, oh, my God, you killed this uber important NPC is just gone. They're mm-hmm. not in the world anymore. Yeah. So, you know, it, it changed things. And now for us, it's, it's like more of a story of we kind of like boned our world and left. For them, it's like, oh, my God, this thing happened. It changed, you yeah. know. So it's kind of cool. It was fun. Mm-hmm. You know, so the question is, what are you guys doing in your games? Do you play like it's, are you playing that session like it's the only session? Or are you uber conservative and afraid that your character is going to have bad stuff happen to them or they're going to die? Let us know in the comments below. While you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. And be sure to check out some of our great sponsors like Armor Class 10 and Easy Roller Dice. Find them in the description. So until next time, stay stay nerdy. nerdy.